Welcome back to this course of uh, chemical crystallography. In the previous class, we were discussing about the 2D lattices with symmetry elements and 2D space groups. So, we will continue our discussion in this direction, but now we will try to draw these 2D lattices with the symmetry elements only without placing any object or any compound in that the way I was doing in the previous lecture where I was incorporating a letter P which signifies the presence of a particular compound or a molecule or a chemical entity. So, we will try to draw these uh, space lattices with symmetry elements only mentioned. So, the first symmetry element that we have in 2D lattice is just as we indicated P1 and since there is no symmetry in this which means it has only a 360 degree rotational symmetry and nothing else. So, the oblique lattice we draw for P1 lattice does not have any symmetry element indicated in that. But when we go to P2 as we know 2 means it has a twofold axis of rotation and that twofold has to be identified by its appropriate symbol. So, we should draw the oblique lattice and then identify the twofold axis first at the four corners and because of the presence of two parallel two folds, the midpoint of these edges become two fold as well. In addition, the center of the unit cell a two fold is generated in the same manner. So, when we do the third one which is P m, this P m indicates that it has a mirror plane and transverse mirror plane along the edge. So, now I am drawing a rectangular lattice with the bold line on two sides up and down and two vertical sides are non bold. So, these two are mirror planes and as we have seen in the previous lecture because of these two mirrors, two parallel mirrors, a third mirror is generated in the middle portion at the middle of this unit cell. In the same way, let us try to draw P G. What is G? G is a glide plane and this glide plane is going to run in horizontal direction in a rectangular lattice. The vertical lines are just lines and they are not mirrors. So, I am not making them bold, I am just drawing them to join and make it a rectangular lattice. So, the up and down edge indicates the glide. Again, a glide plane is further generated in the middle of this unit cell and this is the notation for P g. Now, as we had done earlier C m where we have a centered lattice and then which it means that the lattice has one lattice point at the center of the unit cell. So, this is the unit cell. The mirror that we are talking about is located here that is at the two sides and also in the middle as you have a lattice point in the middle of this unit cell. Now, the presence of these two parallel mirrors would give rise to a glide in between. This was shown in the previous class 
with the letter P. See above we have PM. Now if we want to do PMM that means we have two mirror planes which are perpendicular to each other which means all the four sides of, the, of this rectangular lattice correspond to a mirror plane. So if I want to highlight all the four sides, all the four sides are bold. So these are, are the mirrors, two parallel mirrors from up and down generates a mirror in the middle in the horizontal direction and the mirror which are perpendicular the middle point of that is also a transverse mirror. What is the result of this? Here we have two mirror planes intersecting like that. So when two mirrors intersect like this the point of intersection becomes a twofold axis. So we have twofold at every point of intersection of these mirror planes. So this represents the two dimensional space group PMM with the symmetry elements only. Now we will try to do two more which we did not do in the previous lecture. One is PMG, other ones are P3M1 and P31M. So let us first see how the PG, PMG would look like. This involves one mirror and one glide. The mirror is a longitudinal mirror along the length and the glide is a transverse glide which is like this. So this dash line indicates the glide. So as soon as we draw two parallel mirrors and the corresponding glide here, what happens is in the middle point a glide is generated and two mirror planes are generated at one fourth and three fourth. So now at these points of corners and the glide and the mirror intersection points we generate a twofold and this is also there in the center of the unit cell. So these are the two folds that are generated in this particular two dimensional space lattice. In the previous lecture we saw that in case of a three fold lattice that is P3 we have three fold axis at four corners and two more three fold axis in these two locations as if it forms a triangle and this three fold alternates these three three folds to each other when it is rotated by 120 degree. Now we will see two very similar but highly different two dimensional lattices. One is designated as P3M1. In this case, as just like P3, we have threefold axis at all the four corners and exactly same way 
three folds at two places in the middle of the lattice and then what we have is our mirrors and in this particular case the mirrors that are there are through all the threefold axis in concert. So these are all mirror planes. So what we have here is that the three folds all of them contain a mirror plane in different direction. The corresponding other two dimensional space group that we can construct which is P31M has threefold axis at same places but the location of the mirrors are such that not all the threefold axes contain a mirror plane. So how is it visualized? Let us take a different color and show it in the same manner. So the edges are the mirror planes and the diagonal which does not contain the threefold is another mirror plane. But the three folds which are inside the unit cell do not contain any mirror plane along them. So these two P3M1 and P31M are very similar but significantly different two dimensional space groups that one can construct. Why do we need to know all these? Because in three dimension also we have space groups of this kind. So the location of mirror plane changes the three dimensional orientation or arrangement of molecules in those lattices and gives rise to two different crystal structures. At some point of time in the previous lecture we discussed about the SN and N bar axis. SN is a rotor reflection axis in molecular symmetry while in crystallography a similar axis is called roto inversion which is written as n bar. So let us see how these two different notations are going to result into similar diagrams which indicate that some of these SNs are same as n bars. Let us see what happens if we try to draw a 6. What is a 6? S6 means it is 60 degree rotation followed by a reflection perpendicular to a mirror per, perpendicular to a mirror which is perpendicular to your S6 axis. So if this is S6 axis the mirror is here. So now if I have any object at this point and I am rotating this object by 60 degree and then reflecting it goes below the plane. So as soon as some object is rotated and reflected it goes below the plane. So the object which is above the plane is written as a closed circle. The object which is in the below the plane is written as open circle. So like this let us construct a diagram First I divide this circle into six parts. Now if I start from here 
I rotate it by 60 degree and reflect. So, my angle of rotation is perpendicular to this plane of projection. So, this is my six fold axis which is perpendicular to the plane of projection. So, as a result if I rotate and reflect the plane of reflection is my plane of projection. So, when I am reflecting this point should go below the plane and become open circle. We do the operation once again rotate that open circle do a reflection it comes above the plane because it was here rotation reflection rotation reflection rotation reflection. So, every time I reflect it changes the plane. So, again rotation and reflection makes it closed circling rotation and reflection makes it open circling. Let us see what happens if we do the it for 3 bar. What is 3 bar? 3 bar indicates that 120 degree rotation followed by inversion. So, if I have this axis here, I rotate the object from here like this 120 degree and then if we invert across the center of inversion, the object comes in the lower hemisphere. So, once again it becomes open circle. But you see it is not a reflection which brings the molecule here. It is rotation and inversion. So, it goes somewhere else exactly on the opposite corner. So, once again we draw a circle divide it into six parts. And this is my three bar axis. So, I should draw it accordingly. So, when I start from this close circle, I should rotate it and bring it here that is 120 degree rotation followed by inversion across the center of inversion it goes there and becomes an open circle. Then again you rotate that open circle by 120 degree it should come here as open circle and then when I am reflecting it should go and get reflected as a closed circle. Again I do 120 degree rotation followed by inversion the open circle becomes a closed circle. Then again this open circle is rotated by 120 degree to this point and invert it. It comes here. Again I rotate it by 120 degree and do an inversion it comes here. So, what we can see here in these two figures is that they are one and the same. That means the molecular symmetry S6 is equivalent to crystallographic symmetry 3 bar. Let us do the same exercise for S4. What is S4? It is nothing but 90 degree rotation followed by reflection. So, when I am doing 90 degree rotation, I divide this circle by in 4 parts. I start with a point here and rotate it by 90 degree and then take a reflection. So, by taking a point here, rotating it by 90 degree and taking a reflection, it goes to the lower hemisphere. So, it changes the plane. So, it becomes an open circle. Then again, we do the same. We rotate it by 90 degree and take a reflection. It comes to the upper plane or upper, above the plane. So, it becomes closed circle. Do it once again another 90 degree rotation followed by reflection takes it there as open circle. Let us see what happens if we do the same operations in terms of 4 bar. What is 4 bar? Again 4 fold rotation followed by inversion. 
So, we should draw the symbol for 4 bar and now we start with a closed circle. What we do is we rotate this closed circle by 90 degree and do inversion. So, by inversion it goes across the center of inversion goes to the other side and becomes open circle. Then again we rotate it by 90 degree, do an inversion, it becomes closed circle. Then again we do it another 90 degree and invert it, it becomes open circle. So, this left hand side drawing indicates S4, the right hand side drawing indicates 4 bar. So, this, these two drawings are again same which means S4 is equivalent to 4 bar. Molecular symmetry S4 is equivalent to crystallographic symmetry 4 bar. I hope you understood the logic behind these drawings. So, I would like you to try and draw the same for S3 and see that whether it is equivalent to 6 bar or not. Now, in this particular slide, I have uh, incorporated all the 32 space uh, point groups that we uh, encounter in crystallography and along with that, we have the corresponding equivalent molecular point group symbol for all these 32 point groups in crystallography. And you see that these, these point groups are denoted with the corresponding denoted with the corresponding crystal system. So, under triclinic we have 1 and 1 bar and the corresponding point molecular point groups are C1 and Ci which means in case of 1 there is no symmetry other than n fold rotation which is 360 degree rotation, 1 fold rotation and in case of 1 bar you have only inversion symmetry and nothing else. Under monoclinic there are three different point groups m, 2 and 2 by m. Whenever we say m it is only a mirror, when we say 2 it is just a two fold and when we say 2 by m it means it is a combination of two fold along b and the mirror is perpendicular to B by convention. The corresponding molecular point groups are Cs, and C2 and C2H. Then when we move to orthorhombic, once again we have three point groups, MM, 2 to 2 and MMM. So, when we say MM that means we have two mirror planes which are perpendicular to each other. When we see a 2, 2, 2, you have 3, 2 folds perpendicular to each other. And when we say MMM, then that means you have 3 mirror planes perpendicular to each other, 1, 2 and third one is like this. So, the corresponding molecular point groups are written here as C2V, D2 and D2H. Now, in tetragonal, you can see there are larger number of point groups because there are different possibilities. We can have 4, 4 bar, 4 by m, 4 mm, 4 bar 2 m, 4 2 2, 4 by m, m m and the corresponding molecular point groups are listed here. In case of tetragonal lattice, the unique axis is C because your A and B axis are same and C is the unique axis along which is your four fold lines. So, when we say four or four bar that four or four bar is parallel to C. So, as soon as we say four by M as here, it means you have a four fold axis along C and the mirror perpendicular to C. In contrast to monoclinic where the two fold is unique axis is parallel to B and the mirror is perpendicular to B. In case of tetragonal, the axis C or Z axis is the unique axis 
So, 4 is along z or along c and the mirror is perpendicular to that. When we say 4 m m, it means we have one fourfold axis along c, but then there are two other mirrors which contains that fourfold axis. One is like this, the plane I am showing like this and then the other plane which is perpendicular to that. But there is no mirror perpendicular to this fourfold. So, these two mirrors which are written here as 4 mm, these two 4 mm's, these two mirrors are parallel to your fourfold axis. Then we have 4 bar 2 m, again 4 bar is along C, 2 is along one of those A or B which are same and mirror is one mirror which contains the 4, four bar axis. Then you have 4 2 2 which means you have a four fold axis and four two folds perpendicular to that four fold axis. So, we just write two of them. And then the last one is 4 by mmm where you have a four fold, you have a perpendicular mirror and then you have two parallel mirrors containing the four fold axis. So, this gives you total 15 crystallographic point groups on the left hand side of the table. The right hand side of the table has the point groups for higher symmetry uh, systems, crystal systems like trigonal, hexagonal and cubic and these are again self explanatory 3, 3 bar, 3 m, 3, 2, 3 bar m and so on and the 6, 6 bar and all that. What is interesting here is that I have identified some of these space groups with yellow highlight. These yellow highlighted uh, point groups 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, those 11 highlighted point groups are called as Lave groups. which identify the symmetry of that particular type of lattice and these Lave groups can be identified if we take a rotation photograph of a crystal. So, what do we mean by rotation photograph? A rotation photograph is the diffraction pattern of a crystal when the crystal is placed in front of the X-ray beam and the crystal is rotated by 360 degree at a given speed maybe in, in one minute you rotate the crystal by 360 degree and shine x-ray on that, the diffraction pattern that comes out of that will have a symmetry which corresponds to the corresponding Lave symmetry of that particular crystal lattice. So, here what we see two point groups which are highlighted in SAM. 3, 2 and 2, 3, they look similar in, in the way we write, but they are entirely different. One is 3, 2 belonging to a trigonal system, while the other one is 2, 3 which belongs to a cubic system. In case of a cubic system, the threefold axis is the one which passes through the body diagonal. In case of trigonal also, this threefold axis is one which passes through the diagonal, but the systems are different because the angles are not 90 degree. The angles are not 90 degree and that is why these two are different and we will see how to draw these two diagrams using a crystallographic projection that is stereographic projection of these point groups in the next class. So, today we have discussed about the two dimensional lattices, how to draw those two dimensional lattices on a pen of paper identifying their symmetries. Then we discussed about roto inversion and roto reflection axis and we have shown some cases where the roto inversion and roto reflection identify uh, show that I, they are identical. And then we discussed about the 32 point groups that are 
found in these uh, crystal structures, I think one has to really go through this using a textbook so that the orientation of different uh, symmetry elements and the mirror planes twofold axis, threefold axis will be clear if you go through a textbook. So we will study in the next class the stereographic projections of some of these point groups and we will uh, learn how to pre present these 32 point groups in a plane, uh, plane sheet of paper.